Shalom, shalom. So I'm going to do another little live, which is actually going to be for a reel. So it's going to be the video here talking about salvation. So just so you know, this isn't going to be one of the live long teachings tonight. Now, what I want to cover is salvation. Somebody reached out and said, could you help my mother understand what salvation is? If the law is still enforced, what is what does it mean to be saved? And so I'm gonna quickly do a video on this, just stay focused on the video part of it and then post it as a reel, which will link to the full video. So remember, if I just try to do a reel, I only have so many seconds or minutes. So what I wanna talk about is that, what is salvation? So the question was, please, they said, please explain to my mother salvation. Salvation is best pictured in the story of the Passover. So we must go back to the story of the Passover. And when Yeshua, um, okay, so let's go back to the, I'm sorry, let's just go to the whole story of Passover. The Israelites were in Egypt. Egypt is one of only two Hebrew words that are always, meets, always dual purpose. And it's the Hebrew word Mitzrayim. It's never singular never singular and it's never just plural it's called what dual purpose and so when you look at the fact okay so these Israelites were in Egypt they were bond in bondage and in slavery that is a representation of us being bound in sin not in the promised land Egypt represents the opposite of the promised land so we were in Egypt and we were in sin we were told in the beginning of the year at Anabib to take a pass a lamb on the tenth day of the of the of the first month, inspect this perfect spotless lamb, and it could be of the flock or the herd, of the goats or the it could be a goat or a lamb. We were to look at this on the day ten, keep it in our home, and then on the fourteenth, at the end of the fourteenth day, as the fifteenth day was beginning, we were told to offer that up as a offering. And we were told to put the blood of that Passover lamb on the doorpost and the lintel. And by doing that act, that would cause the death angel to pass over and spare our firstborn son. Basically, our strength. The firstborn is your strength. Your, your, yeah, they're, they're the kinsman redeemer, okay? So, we put the blood on and we did nothing else, right? When we were in Egypt, we're the, Egyptian, we're the Israelites back in Egypt. And this is a picture of salvation. We're sitting in sin. We take our Passover lamb, Yeshua. We put the blood. We accept the blood that he shed for us, just like the lamb, the lamb's blood. They put it on the doorpost and lintel. We put it on our minds and our deeds. We do the right works. We think the right thoughts. And that causes the death angel to pass over. That death angel is represented representative of the judgment of eternal separation and damnation from God, right? Eternal separation from God, eternal damnation. So we did nothing other than put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the lintel. We did nothing other than accept the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach as our savior. And that caused the death angel to pass over us, our firstborn, our strength, okay? Now, if we had continued to sit in Egypt, which is symbolic of sin, and sin is transgression of the law. That's in Romans 3 through 6, 1 John 3, 4, many other places. The law points out what is sin and what violates God's ways. It, the law also tells us the good and holy ways of God. It tells us what to do and what not to do. If we violate those commandments, we are in sin. We are eternally separated from God, right? The death angel passed over us if we accepted that blood, we're forgiven. We, we did not die because we accepted the forgiveness and grace of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, which was represented by the Passover, the Pesach offering sacrifice. Now, again, if we had stayed in Egypt, we would have continued in sin. So while we may have been saved, that the death angel did not destroy us, would we have ultimately overcome our sins and thus been saved from those sins? No. <laughs> if we had continued in Egypt, we would have died in our sin. And that's what Matthew talks about. Matthew 5 says, He who breaks the least of the commandments will be least in the kingdom of heaven. It does not say, if you have accepted Yeshua as your 
Passover lamb that you're going to hell or Sheol or to eternal separation from God. If you put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel and you truly believed that he would sp save you and spare you, then who, right? I, I don't know, but he literally says the death angel passed over. We are told in the book of Matthew, Yeshua says there's levels in the kingdom of heaven. He who breaks the least of the commandments and teaches others to do so will be least in the kingdom of heaven, correct? So I don't want to do least and I don't want to be least. But those people who basically just kind of believe in Jesus, Yeshua, and basically aren't born again, it doesn't say they're not going to be eternally with God. It doesn't say they're say, not saved from eternal damnation. What it says is they're going to be at least at the most they have to hope for is they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. So... Then we were told, though by Father God, by Yahweh Elohim, to leave Egypt. We were told to leave Egypt, right? And if we left Egypt, we had the hope of entering the promised land. Because to get to the promised land, you have to leave Egypt, which is, again, representative of sin. So we had, <laughs> we had Egypt representing sin. The death angel passed over when we put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel, which is symbolic of accepting the blood of Yeshua. And then we are told to leave. When we leave, we would go through the Red Sea. And we were, that was like a, a symbol of the baptism. And it's a symbol of getting immersed in the word of God because the water cleanses. We're told in Ephesians, I believe it's chapter four, that says the water cleanses us. The water is symbolic of the word of God. So <laughs> when you go through, so you leave Egypt, you, you're, you're basically you accepted Yeshua as your savior. You go through the water, which is symbolic of getting in the word. You start learning and you go to the mountain to receive the commandments of God. So once you were saved from eternal damnation, you are expected to leave the place of sin in which you find yourself, go through the water, the baptism, get cleansed in the word of God and go to the mountain to receive the commandments of God. That is what the picture of salvation is. You are saved by faith that if you put the Passover blood, Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus blood on your heart and your soul, on your mind and your deeds, if you believe with all your might, heart, mind, soul, strength that he was the savior and you were a sinner in need of that saving, you saw the death angel coming, it shows him passing over you if you put that blood on you. If you die in your sins in Egypt, you don't have much hope. For getting close to God. You probably won't see his face in eternity because there are levels in the kingdom of heaven. If you leave, you get in, go through the water, you get in the word, and you go to the mountain to learn the commandments of God, you have a good hope of being his bride, his chosen one, if you obey, because then you get to go to the promised land. Okay, like I told you guys at the beginning, sorry I didn't answer the questions. This live was simply for the purposes of addressing a longer question that I could not address in a reel. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is stop this because somebody asked, will you please explain salvation to my mom? So what we see in this is that the law never saved. The salvation was the faith in Yeshua. But if you truly had faith in the Messiah as your savior, then you would leave Egypt. You would leave sin go through the water, get in the word of God and go to the mountain to receive the commandments and then become his people and go into the promised land, right? You don't sit in your sin. So the law never saved, the law never did anything but point out our sin and what is good and bad. Okay, so I'm gonna post this so that people can see this because that was a specific question and then I'm gonna, gonna quickly pause here. Uh, are you guys, if you want to do a Bible study, I do have enough mental power to do that tonight. I am um, today, like I said, told you today earlier, I know some of you missed it, but I was not going to be doing the formal study today with you guys since we have one member here in Sheridan that cannot make it in the afternoon. So we're going to try to like every third week or once a month or whatever, go to her place at 10 a.m. because that's the only time she can do it in the morning. So that's why today we didn't do a live study teaching, but is anybody wanting to do a Bible study tonight? We surely can. I can come back on here in a minute, um, but I'm going to post this. <clears throat> so I'm going to just give you a few seconds. <clears throat> Me too, Cassandra. I didn't look at any messages or questions or anything, so I'm sorry. Okay, so what I'll do, I'm going to post this, make the reel, and I'll be on in a few more minutes. But I really wanted to get that question addressed for the, the, the person, for their mother, so that they know that we're not saved by the law, but you're not really safe from your sins either. <laughs> like if you don't leave Egypt, you're continuing in your sin. You may have eternal salvation. You're saved from like eternal damnation, but um, you're sitting in your sins. So therefore you're heaping up judgments for yourself on judgment day. Okay, so 
I'll be back on. Give me a few minutes to post this. Much love to you.